All right, y'all. No doubt about it. This gonna be the one. It's gonna work. Speak into existence. Switched over some devices. Should be smoothly. No pressure. Um, second time, third time is a charm. No doubt about it. We always do this. It'll be just fine. What's meant to happen is always meant to happen. So, uh, yes. Peace and positivity to everybody. Thank y'all for tuning in to, you know, thank y'all for tuning in to all my episodes. If you haven't, if you missed the last five episodes, please go back, run them back on my, my, Facebook, my Facebook page and check them out. Some last for like an hour, some last for like 30 minutes. Um, the last one I did a little bit earlier was about 12 minutes, 15 minutes. So, you know, some good content on there. But just waiting on my, uh, waiting on my guest to come through. She was just on. We made it work from her end, so hopefully it works this time. So, we just wait. You should be getting notifications soon. You should be coming on. Well, how y'all doing today, man? What's going on? Hope y'all blessed. Blessed and not stressed during this whole pandemic and everything like such. This should be her coming on right now. Hopefully connect. Smooth connection. Should be good to go. Cool. Uh -huh. It worked. All right. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, everyone. What's going on? Sorry for the inconvenience. No, yes. I want to apologize for difficulties. That. Finally worked. Um, so, y'all know how this goes. I'm going to be doing the art. She's going to be doing majority of the talking. But I will be conversing, of course. But she'll be doing more talking than I will be. Y'all know a lot about me already, but this is her time to share her story and whatnot. So uh, first off, of course, I'm going to just pass you the mic and let you introduce yourself and kind of, you know, what you do. Um, I'll just do that first before we get into it. Well, my name is Aura Singh on Facebook, but my real name is Sir Jean Lucien, as, a.k.a. Jeannie. As of late, as about a week ago, I deemed, not I deemed, I found a little fame. And that fame became a passion of mine. I didn't even know that that title was given to me. But I guess some people say it wasn't given. It's what it, it's what it is. I'm, I'm from New York. I've been in Florida for seven years. I left New York with $14,000 cash money with a bachelor's degree in criminal justice, emphasis on psychology. Mm. I came here to rule yeah. the world. <laughs> like if I wasn't going to get my, if I wasn't going to be given my 40 acres right. and a mule, I'm about to come here and get my 40 <laughs> acres and a mule. Right. Like low income, you know, low mm. income state. I'm coming from a big city. I got the education. I got the job mm. training. Last job I had was um Department of Probation okay. at 33 Beauty Streets, working under mm. Evelyn Powell. So sisters educated, I came here eager, ready to right. earn, earn money, make right. money, and buy a piece mm -hmm. of property. So upon coming to Florida, I was five months pregnant with my mm -hmm. daughter. I realized even though you have money, that doesn't mean anything. I did have an eviction. It was a three-year-old eviction. Mm -hmm. I was willing to pay two, three-way deposit if I had to, but having an eviction is just like having leprosy or something. Right. It was hard to find. So life must go on. We, you know, I had a five-year-old and pregnant mm -hmm. husband, you know, I'm still able to work, but now nobody wants to hire me because so four months later, I'm going to be on maternity. Mm -hmm. So the husband started working two, two, three jobs, but the whole time we're looking for places, can't find places. So we're in hotels. Mm -hmm. So now $1,400 you're paying Depending on the hotel now with kids, you don't want to go into um sorry about that. 
somebody just contacted me. Um, you don't want to go into a rundown hotel, but I don't have five star hotel money right. either. So I first place I ended up was um, Home Sweet Home, which is no longer Home Sweet yeah. Home. I was in Home Sweet Home for over a year. That fourteen thousand dollars and then some mm. easily in less in less than a year. Because right. remember, this is Kissimmee, right. tourist right. state or not tourist city rather. Mm -hmm. So you're all, you're off seasons. You're easily paying fifty dollars in you know a night. Mm -hmm. On season, you're easily your fifty dollars in the most rundown hotel can easily be eighty ninety dollars. God forbid it's a holiday. Right, right, <laughs> right. So that hotel is just sucking up that money, sucking up the money. So now you have no room to save. You're paying these hotels because at eleven o'clock, you got to check out. By eleven o one, they don't care if you owe them a quarter. A dollar, if you've been there for a month, right. you're out. Right. Mm -hmm. You're out. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in that situation three times. Three times. So. And it's not that, um, it's not no addiction. It's not no lack of work. We work. We West Indian. We, right. we love. <laughs> we work. Right, of course, of course. <laughs> we work. <laughs> so, 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 so take me through the time, the first time that, you say that you said you went through it three times, right? So tell me, so, so tell, take me through kind of the process of the first time you went through it, and what was you know kind of like the 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 setup of the goals at that. What, what was your mind going through at that point in time? Again, I came here with fourteen thousand dollars, so to me that was in the, the in a low income state coming yeah. from New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's money to me. So it was like okay, three months. We know that we didn't find a place. Like we had some job potential set up. I was Disney. Right. right. <laughs> it was my um potential set up. We're not gonna go into that because I <laughs> mm. <laughs> Okay. And so it was okay, we're gonna stay, we're gonna be here with the the goal is we not to find something that we're not gonna rush into it. Three months we're gonna stay. Yeah. Three months we're gonna stay. Then we're gonna find jobs and then we're gonna own something or you know, purchase something flat out right or rent to own mm -hmm. something, the ownership. Because we was like, okay, after doing our due diligence, like, oh, $14,000 is going to cover the um, closing. I said, okay, well, first time, um, first owner, first time buyers, um, loans, all of that, I'm looking into yeah. that. So, okay, now it's three months was to go. So now two months has come in. He just started working. First job he had was with Tuffy's. Mm -hmm. On his 89th day <laughs> where he was qualified mm -hmm. for um, insurance and all of that, which was Christmas Eve of 2012. Mm -hmm. He was fired. He was fired. Wow. That's and at the time, we had just got signed. We had just signed up for an appointment, um, apartment, which was in um, or East Orlando, yeah. called Avalon Reserve. Okay. He had that apartment. It's like okay, but now we can't get it because he's fired. They're gonna want to replace that. So it was like, damn, that was discouraging. But yeah. let's, let's not give up. He, right. There was one job. Now he's working two jobs. Mm. So now it's like, okay, now summer hits. Summer hits means what? Tourists is in town. Right. So the hotel prices goes up. Everything goes up. Right. And in the meantime, it's just like, wow. I thought coming from New York, I saw homelessness. Mm. I have never seen homelessness till I reached Kissimmee, Florida. Yeah. I thought never. I thought, I thought it was we, worse. I thought nothing. Was worse. Now, Kissimmee. I can't speak for the whole entire state of Florida, but Kissimmee. Yeah. No. Right. No. New York has no homeless people compared to Kissimmee. Yeah. Like you see crazy people. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between crazy and homeless. You understand? Right. People that doesn't want to be committed. They'll run the streets, they'll run the train, act a fool, but have a home to go to. Right, right, right. Then you have your winos. Even they have a home to go to. Mm -hmm. And in New York, you have shelters. You have thousands of shelters within that one little city. Like Brooklyn, I could name five shelters that's within 10 mile radius. Right. And Kissimmee, I have, um, no. Yeah, there is none, there's no, there is none in Oscar County. That's that's a, that you, you got to go to Orlando, Orange County. That, I think that's closer one Orange County or uh, Lake County, I think. But there's none of Oshawa County. Yep. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Orlando County, 
is now catering more to um and pretty much Salvation Army is the only thing that we have right. that's closest to Kissimmee, which is still forty five minutes. If if you don't have a car, you're talking about three hours on the bus. Right. Right. Now the first time going through this, it was like, okay, I'm not sleeping in no car. I'm not, let me, I'm going down there. I was told that it opens up at few let people and I get there at 930. The line was already around the corner. They let three people in. Yeah. And they said the beds were full. We could come again. People sat there and they parked and they sat there all night. Next day, two people was put in. After the third day, I gave up. Alvin, I gave up. Yeah. And then you tell me I could go in. Then my family has to be separated. Then it's thirty six dollars per person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where are we getting this money? Right, right. Can I at least work for my state? I'm not. You're not even letting me do dishes or sweep up or any. I just not even an option. Mm -hmm. So and then tomorrow morning I have to pack up all our stuff and go again, and fight for a bed again, all over. And I think I think that's what a lot of people don't understand what the homeless have to go through when it comes to those shelters. That it's not always sweet, it's not always smooth, you know, it's not always what it's played out. To it's, not, yeah, it's not always. Yeah. Seriously, and there's no. First of all, it's for you to even have an always. Yeah. You have to have that shelter. Yeah. If you can't get in. You don't even, you can't even entertain the idea of always because you're still out the door. So you don't there's nothing to entertain. Right. So this day I don't know what the inside of that shelter looked like because I've never made it in. Right, right, right. And then you have a working family with a I have a baby. Mm -hmm. You're separating us. That's my sole source of income. That's my ride. I don't drive. Mm -hmm. You're separating us. And there's no guarantee that he could be in the male shelter next to me. We just got to figure out where and how we're going to meet up the next day. Right. right. There's just added on stress. Right. And you, you, you froze, okay, you froze on, my, on, my, on my screen. Can you see me still? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I can see you still. I don't know why. You... I see you still. Okay. Uh, I can hear you clearly. I just can't see you moving. See her? Can y'all see her uh, still? Yeah, and hear me. Comment if you all can see it, but go ahead. You can keep on talking though. I can hear you. Audio. But yeah. Oh. So that was the first go about. Then um, we ended up getting um an apartment. Okay. Because we were just tired. The, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. That's why I made like this third time around. I reflect on it and I can see that's where. Yeah. Um, the mistake, one of our biggest mistakes mm -hmm. was the first chance that we get to save enough money to get we just got an apartment. <laughs> we didn't worry about making three times more. We just know that we save, we sacrifice, we go food pantry, like we can manage it. Yeah. We manage it for about five months. Mm -hmm. We manage it for about five months. And then guess what? Slow season come because the tourist is not coming in. Right, right, right. And then you have Irma hits. So there it goes. Yeah. The, the income has gone. The income is gone. So where do we end up at? Do we end up right back in the hotels again after all is said and done? Two years later. Then this time around, you know, I found myself just working even harder. I was working, um, I was working Walmart to the eleven. Mm -hmm. in Claremont. Okay. And then from Walmart to the 11, I was working at um the Fairfield Inn in Celebration. Okay. I was working as a breakfast attendant. Mm -hmm. I worked there from 5, 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Then on the weekends, I was working Happy Day, um, Happy Day um, Arcade in Old Town. Okay. Save up a little bit of money. Yeah. With um my church family, I was able to buy a when I tell you a depleted <laughs> mobile home, yeah. the man had five cats, four dogs, and he had brain cancer. He defecated all over the place. Wow. We had to open the windows for two weeks wow. just to let it air out before we could go in there and clean it. 
We paid 1760 for it. Wow. The person we got it from had a, power, a living power of attorney. And the living power of attorney was just that, a living power of attorney. We just knew he had a power of attorney. Yeah. We invested over five grand in repairing the roof, the floors, repainted outside and cemented the steps. Like it was just falling apart. Mm -hmm. Two years after that, his son then didn't, didn't even know that he died. He came in, um, filed out an estate, something it was called, and they took the property up from under us. Yeah. We offered to buy it. Nothing. But around that time, by the grace of God, mm -hmm. income tax season was right around the corner. We, I took my all my little income tax return because my husband he does he owes back child support so his he doesn't get his income tax. Okay. So I took all my little income tax return and I bought me a 1998 Fifth Lottery. Mm -hmm. If you look it up, you will see it's a big monstrosity and it's a 98. Yeah. It wasn't in that great of a condition. Mm -hmm. So we fixed up the outside. I literally called Polk County, Lake, every park that was in Kissimmee. Nobody wanted to take my my little old raggedy part, um, RV. Yeah. Yes. Man. I just want again not doing due diligence. We got money. We wanted ownership. There's something we could call ours. So we got what we could afford a '98 for what we can afford. Mm -hmm. So now that we got it, after we got it, we still had to be in a hotel for six months before we could move into it. You know why? Wow. What happened? It was a '98. It was a 98. We The outside, I can find some old pictures and send to you. Yeah. The mm -hmm. outside looked, you know, it had some dents, you know, but we sand down the big dents and whatnot, not using hand arm, was it mallet, and knocked it back and painted. It looked nice. The inside, we just worried about that after we moved in. Yeah. We made it livable. Mm -hmm. But nobody wanted to even entertain the idea of having a RV that's 10 years old or older in their park because it would be deemed an eyesore and not appealing to the tourists. Yeah, that's not cool. I found the one little, I found the one little RV park that accepted my RV and mind you originally, mm. they denied the RV because it was a 98 and they denied the pictures. I came from Department of Health on Fortune Road trying to take my kids, um, trying to get their medical record to take to the schools because they were stripping too. Yeah. And something say, just, I told my husband, go down the road. He said, what for? I said, I think um, we're going to come across a, um, a park. He said, we've never seen a park there. I said, let's just go. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not going down there. We don't have much gas. I said, Dave, just go. Yeah. He said, at least tell Google, take you to the nearest park. And I told Google, take me to the nearest RV park. And he took me right there to Michigan and Carroll Street. I looked at the name. I said, the name sounds familiar. I don't know if I called them, left a message or not. Mm -hmm. It's when I went into the office. I explained to the lady. It's a 98. I understand. Blah, blah, blah. Long story short, she gave me her email address. Mm -hmm. It's after she gave me her email address, I said to my husband, you know, they denied us already. I'm not even going to send it. Yeah. He said, you know what? God moves in mysterious ways. Just send it. I said right in that parking lot and I sent it to the lady and I waited five minutes later mm -hmm. and I told the lady. I sent it. She looked at it and she said, it's okay. The manager's not here, but I'm going to approve it. This was the last bout of the homelessness. That right there, yeah. that, that was ownership. That was ours. Yeah. I was so happy. I promised my kids we will never, yeah. this is it, babies, from here. It's a house. Yeah, right. You understand? Mm -hmm. Not even an apartment. I went from a um, hotel to um RV to a house. Right. But ones that I tell you, I've slept in my car, right? But this time around, my husband worked um right behind Old Town in the resort. Mm. They were still because of the type of Dorian. They literally went from 100% capacity to not even 5% capacity. Mm. So he was laid off from... um. Early March, no, correction. He went from working 60 hours to barely working 35 hours a week. Uh, why did, and then why did before cut COVID like even fully, because we didn't even know anything about COVID. We knew that there was um, a virus, but we didn't know, but the hotels and corporate actually knew. Okay, okay. So they was cutting down hours. 
and then when the shutdown before the shutdown happened and there was everything was being entertained they literally before shutdown mm. laid him off cuz now they're not making enough money and can cover to pay everybody he's been there 3 years unfortunately he was the last person outside of agency temp agencies that they work with mm-hmm. he was the last person in so he would be the first person to go wow now the park was working with us. They was taking um, partial payments and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it was hours cut first. And um, they took the partial payment for March, and we're supposed to give them the three seventy five balance mm-hmm. on the twenty seventh. Twenty seventh came, we didn't have the three seventy five balance to get. What? They told us, you know, they're losing hours as well. Um, they're losing um check-ins as well Mm -hmm. due to the virus and they still recovering from we were shut down for a while because we had sewer problems in the park Mm -hmm. they were still recovering from that so he manager thomas brent had no problem telling me flat out that it would be cheaper for him no it'll be cheaper for him to get me off the lot and more lucrative to get um what snowbirds in and I was offered the deal that if I pack up and I leave within a week, I could spare eviction. Mm-hmm. I packed up within a week because I didn't need another eviction on my um, on record. record. Yeah. Um, my husband was still getting, you know, we're still going, he's still getting paid because he's getting paid every two weeks. So he had a check and a hold. Mm-hmm. He had some savings. So we went, the first few days, it was like, okay, we couldn't find no hotels that was within a price range because it was a weekend. It was a Friday when we was put out. Matter of fact, it was a Friday when we put out. So the hotel right, um, rates was up. So we said we're going to spend the night in a car. And then the next morning, we're going to go to the hotels that we know we've been to. Mm-hmm. Alvin, none of these hotels had availability. And their prices was already through the roof. And we're still blinded. Because life is happening around us. We're still blinded by coronavirus right. and the, 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 the severity of it all. Right. Right. So one night turned into two nights. Two nights turned into three nights. Then his boss gave him an advance. Then we ended up at a, um, a hotel called Flamengo Inn. Because mm-hmm. we wanted to be close to the kids' school. My kids' school is on Mill Okay. They went from riding the bus to now I'm walking with them. 45-minute walk. I do it four times a day. Yeah. That hotel was infested with drug addicts, literally prostitutes. I was paying $80 a night before tax. That's bad. You know... Microwave was extra. Mm. Microwave was extra. A fridge was extra. Yeah. You, you, you know what's crazy about that? So next thing you know... You know what's crazy about that is... When I was in, and sorry to cut you out, so I'm gonna let you continue for sure, but I just wanted to chime in. Okay. Um, when I was in San Francisco, California, you know, San Francisco is horrible with the cost of living. So when I was homeless out there, mm-hmm. and every Sunday I would try to, cause I had, a, I had my car, so I was sleeping in my car at the time. But every Sunday I would try to go, you know, get a get a um, a motel, cause the hotels were so expensive, like two hundred and something dollars a mm-hmm. night. For the hotels over there, but uh, the motels I would drive over to Oakland, and the cheapest hotel over in Oakland was about like eighty five dollars a night, right? But they had no fridge, no microwave, <laughs> nothing was in there. Like it was all type of bad. And the, just the bed. It's it really just the bed. <laughs> like and the, the 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 showers was horrible. It was in the middle of a, a, a gang uh, neighborhood, you know, and so was, they, they were using rooms, like, oh, it, was just, it was just all type of bad. But it's so ridiculous, like, like the little things kind of that we take for granted, like the microwave and the, and the, and the stove and the yeah, place, like man. those little things, like, man, it's like, I, when, I, when I finally got my back into my apartment, I was so grateful just for a microwave, just for a fridge, you know what I'm saying? Just for those little things, but... A shower. A shower. Because I, shower. Nice shower. I used to take mm. my showers in the YMCA. Uh, that's why I took my showers out during the when, when I didn't have a room. I took my showers in YMCA. Um, 
because basically the YMCA, I got a I got a hardship waiver, so my YMCA was like fifteen dollars a month. So I just took my showers in there. Yeah, I didn't even know how to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Racetrack and Wawa was my showers. I used to when the reporters came, I told them, "Look at my big old bathroom." Yeah. Like I'm so bougie. My bathroom has my bathroom has um the gums. Like I cater to you in my in my bathroom. Ain't no wrong with that though. Ain't no wrong with that at all. Well, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. What What makes me mad? No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I just didn't want to um lose um train of thought. Yeah. I was saying all that just to say that what made me mad about it all because whatever I go through, I'm very prideful. Right. I'm very prideful. When I say I'm very prideful, I don't like knocking doors. I don't like asking anybody for anything. Yeah. But when you have two little ones looking at you and saying, Mommy, I'm hungry. Yeah. Mommy, where are we sleeping? Mm -hmm. You got to set that pride aside because you didn't ask to be yeah. here and do what you got to do for yeah. them. Yeah. So it, I had to swallow a serious fistful of humble and humility yeah. pills for me to even go to my first food pantry. And even doing so, I never came out of the car. I let my husband go. Me and the kids was in the car hiding. And then the way that they treat people when they come to these places and make them feel less wow. than, it bugged yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. It bugged me. And I'm, I'm 5'2", 110 pounds soaking wet. And I'm loud and in your face. Yeah. I was in every <laughs> council Men and woman, one in particular, mm -hmm. PC initials. Yeah, I've walked with, I've campaigned for. Mm -hmm. There was days I've called this lady and said, "Look, I that exactly after she gave a hundred thousand dollars to Salvation Army, wow. and said, no job, and you know our situation, mm -hmm. okay? He just started this job. Now we, you know, we were sleep because it got so bad with Corona yeah. now, and we lost the yeah. RV. We in the car." We we done all the savings now, 401ks, yeah, yeah. everything. Kid saving is now going. Now with mm -hmm. Corona, places that didn't have a deposit have a deposit. Yeah. Places that had a deposit is now charging from $60 to $150 deposit. Yeah. Okay? Corona alone, the same $43 place on a Monday is running you $95. Crazy. Okay, Crazy. then you have the deposit. So it was easy to go through our saving. Then it was like, okay, now even if we were able to to to, to have, um pay the room, mm -hmm. and we have a hundred dollars, do we get a hundred dollars this Friday? That's going to just get us through this day, and then we have twenty dollars to eat, or do we sleep on in the car for two days, yeah. and then check back in on Sunday and Monday, and then have three days or two days for the same price? Wow. So that these are the decisions that we had mm -hmm. to make. And in the meantime, in between time, we're in the car now. We're still trying to go to job interview. You go on job interviews. If it's my husband's job interview, you got me in the car, the kids in the car, so we got to park the car. So when you open the door, they don't see that. So even the job that he got now, it's from me making a post on Facebook telling people, look, we're not trying to look for no handout or hand up. I'm not trying to wait for no stimulus check. This is my reality. Here's his qualifications. Can somebody, is anybody hiring? Yeah. It literally took three weeks later, then he did get hired. But what made me mad is I reached out to that commissioner of District 1, initials PC, mm. and she knows I'm coming for her. Yes. Mm. I've campaigned for her, and I told her, look, you know we in the car. He just started this little job. Mm. I've seen Salvation Army's van come and pick up food. That's why I'm assuming it's for the elderly or families that's in hotels that don't have a means yeah. to get there. Is there any way that you can have food delivered to me? Mm. She read that message five minutes after I sent it. She didn't reply to the message to over 24 hours later. And she informed me that they don't do delivery. I told her I've seen it with my own eyes. So if it's not delivery, where does, where's the food going? She said, I have no knowledge. Well, I don't, we just don't do delivery. I don't know what to tell you. Call some other agencies. I asked, do you have any referrals? This is all through Facebook Messenger. Yeah. She never replied to me. She replied to me a week ago, mm -hmm. almost a week ago. And do you know what, what day that was? There was the day that my, my story made Washington Post. Oh, with the, yeah, cause I, said, I, I remember you telling me about the Post on uh, Washington, I mean, following, sharing your story. 
Okay, yeah, that was last yeah. year. Was so it's just like now, all of a sudden, now it's re-election. You're looking for kudos. You want to use my name, or you want me to just say, oh, you've done. No, where were you three months ago? Where were you two months ago? When I was up and running and I was able to, when I had a roof over my head and I was able to provide um, campaign um, energy for you, you you was with me then. Mm. Now nothing. Your family owns multiple hotels, even the raggedy ones on 192. Even they're not affordable for these homeless people to be in, but you deemed yourself the people's commissioner. Mm. Gotcha. People's commissioner. How about you make some of these hotel rooms affordable? People's commissioner, while COVID is going on, and families that work for Disney, that still support you and have your their, their, your sign on their lawn, that's in foreclosure right now, or is um they got their stickers in their hotel, your stickers on their hotel room door, how and they're getting kicked out of hotels. How about you give them a room for a week or so? You could even barter for them. They can keep the grounds for you. Because I know when I'm asking for a room to stay, I'm not asking for free. I'm very prideful again. I'm willing to work for mine. And if you want to deem yourself the people's commissioner, what are you doing for the people besides making empty promises? I'm tired of the empty promises. I'm tired of acting like we don't exist. You don't want the tourists to know that families are homeless out here. That's why you don't want them to um, gain residency in hotels. But you're okay with the tourists seeing families pushing carts down the street with their um, with their kids? with all their belongings in the shopping cart, you're okay with family seeing people laid up on the side of the side um of, of the sidewalk or at bus stops. How is that okay? Well, five miles, if not less, from where I was parked at. Mm -hmm. For two and a half, if not three months, I lost track of time. I could see Disney's fireworks every night here i'm like i'm in disney's um parking lot if not inside of one of their parks where are you telling me that this the, the where dreams come true where miracles happen you make billions a day but you don't see us you don't see the families you don't see children you don't see your workers that you're paying minimum wage they can't afford a decent apartment they're still living out of their suitcases in hotel rooms I'm tired of the empty promises. I'm tired of being invisible. I'm tired of other families being invisible. I'm tired. And I'm at the point where I did this story and a lot of people in my family is mad that I did this story. It's, I had to put pride aside. I was tired of being tired. Yeah. And I didn't have any way of changing the situation. Only thing I had was my voice. Yeah. So, so my city, I, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No, I was saying, uh, I wanted to uh, ask about two things. So I know one, you know, a little bit about, you know, the polit political side. You know, I don't know the personal conversation you had with, with um, the person you're talking about, the commission you're talking about, um, but, mm -hmm. There is certain things that certain politicians aren't allowed to do because you can only spend a certain amount of money. But I don't know much about the county side. I only know about the city of Kissimmee, more so on that end. County side, county okay. stuff is, is I understand. But um, it's like certain things that you. We're still talking about the city of Kissimmee, by the way, because she's District One in the city of Kissimmee. I just want to go on record for saying that. Oh, okay, got it, got it, got it. I like I said, before I speak on something. Because I'm still in Kissimmee now. Yeah. Before I speak on something, I do my due diligence. Gotcha. Okay, my due diligence. And with that being said, mm -hmm. money that was being given, like I said, one of the foundations, and that's the foundation that she gave the most money to, $100,000. Uh -huh. They don't even have a physical office for a homeless person to go to. They have plenty of salvation thrift stores that overcharges. Uh -huh. But I don't have a place that I can sit down and speak to a homeless advocate. Why? I don't have a place that I can take a shower. So you give $100,000 to do what? The clothes that they're selling are donation. Mm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. You're giving funds to this. This is where I'm at. So I can't even look. But I can go into Hope Thrift and I can ask them, this is my situation, and say, look, I'm homeless. I can go into the Hope Thrift and they will give me an outfit for free or two. Mm. I cannot go into Salvation Army who you just gave $100,000 for, for the cause. Mm. 
and do that. I can't even get a meal from them. I have a problem with that. Gotcha. You're not wondering where the funds are going. And then this, then you promised me a hub for the past five years. That's how I started um, walking with you and promoting you. You promised me a hub. Mm. Right after you gave these people that money, you go, you didn't even, so many abandoned hotels and buildings out here mm. where you could have had a 24 hour hub where you do job training. Yeah, give them shelter and have them work on the grounds for shelter. Yeah. You understand? And train budget I'm sorry I, I'm sorry I was about to say did you, I'm, did I'm just you, uh, you, um, um, the community hope center that's over there on 192 <laughs> yes that's how the Washington Post found me okay yeah they're good because those are my good good I love them I'm forever Look, let me tell you something. Mm. I love them to death. Yeah. Okay, but doing this story opened my eyes to them. Okay? Because mm. I, I used to say outside. The, and St. Vincent de Paul, they were my three, my three, like, there was my three trinity outside of God and, you know, the Holy Spirit. They were my three trinities. Yeah. But I've been yeah. their faces for them. In November, they had a big old dinner where I was a face for them and they got more funding. I was supposed to be at that dinner and received an award. I was not given that award. I've um yeah. I've received a lot of free meals. I've received clothes. I've received toiletries from them, but financially funded. And um, it's community donations that they work off of. Mm -hmm. But let's okay. When they call me to tell me about the Washington Post, and they want to um, have them speak to me. Mm. At first, I felt like I was so indebted, I said yes, yeah. right? I said yes, and I spoke, and I told them, go ahead, give them, um, give the reporter my phone number and whatnot. Mm. Now, right after I committed into doing the story, mm. my case manager, we'll speak off records um, to tell you who that is, informed uh, was very apologetic and I'm saying why because you asked me to do the story she said no it's not that it's just that um for the last three weeks you've had fundings with rental assistance pertaining to um COVID-19 and I completely forgot to call you you forgot to call me when you had fundings for COVID-19 but you didn't forget to call me to be the poster child of your organization right. and even still i felt indebted because i don't bite the hand that feeds me again right. pantry i've gotten clothes i've gotten so when i do it when i'm able to get a few bucks i'm able to buy other things with a few bucks right. you understand be it put gas mm -hmm. in a car so i felt indebted mm -hmm. so i went to i went on to do the story and as i was speaking and i like i told these people you want a story i'm going to give it right. to you at first, I was I, I spoke to him, and I was like, I was ashamed. Then I thought about what my parents are going to say, what my family's going to say. Like, the West Indian community, they're very prideful. Yeah. Like, you better take your suffer in silence. It's nobody's business, especially, you know, being, a, you know, female of color, person of color. You don't want the, you know, to look down on you. So it was just like, I put a lot of, and it was just like, you know what, something got to get. Mm. Something got to get. So now... A lot of, and it's like, okay, I was going to tell the story because at the time I was in the hotel, I was at Econo Lodge. I was under the impression that I was supposed to check out the day after next. And he was supposed to see me the day after, you know, the next day. But I got put out the hotel. I miscalculated. Oh, well, apparently my husband went to pay to the um, deposit or whatnot. So we had to take away one pay to deposit. And it completely blew my mind and I didn't remember. So now the next day come, he's calling me to set up the interview. The pride in me was like, well, I'm not in a hotel room right now. You know, I'm I'm going to be out in the sun, even though I shower early that morning, being in the car, I'm going to be sweaty. I'm not going to give this man no interview. He's just going to disappear. Mm -hmm. He kept on pushing and pushing. He said, I spoke to you. You're so articulate. I would love to tell your story. And your children seems like, like amazing kids. Please consider it. Yeah. I was like, nope, nope. 
and then when I'm saying no to him and I'm I'm talking to um other people that's in the um same situation and I'm telling them how I come across that, then somebody pulled up <laughs> a story where they where they educated me on the fact that the community hope center gets five different five mm -hmm. five one two three four five different financial monetary grants mm -hmm. to help with hotel or rental assistance when i got my rv and i had to pay two way to get in there plus um one month's rent they referred me to saint vincent de paul mm -hmm. When I needed hotel pay, they referred me to St. Vincent de Paul. Okay. I took that personal. Not be, you could refer whoever you want to refer. What I don't know don't hurt mm -hmm. me. But I took this personal and it hurt me because I valued you guys. Whatever you guys told me I did, I went above and beyond. I was given outdated phone numbers. I wasn't bitter, Alvin. You know mm -hmm. what I did? I said they're overwhelmed. They don't know. I had yellow pages, white pages. I had 211 on speed dial. I had, I paid for skip tracing yeah. to update, to update their resource um papers with phone numbers and mm -hmm. stuff like that. The same job that my husband got laid off of, he was taking breaks that wasn't within his time slot to get people employed from the Hope Center. Mm -hmm. And then all you did was use me. I felt used by them, but I still love them and I still support yeah. them. Like I told them. And because of that, they got no mention in my story. And after the story hit, now everybody wants to call me and find out. Because I was, you called me to do this story, but I would have been in the street for two months. Yeah. <laughs> How you not know that? But I'm your success story. I did what I had to do. I set my goals. I pushed through my goals. Only thing they did was be there for me when I started getting frustrated. I'm calling and I'm snapping. Yeah. And I want to direct that passion and just make it seem like passion and not anger. My caseworker was great for that. She let me vent. You understand? Yeah. You guys have given me food, but I felt like, I felt, I felt used. Yeah. I felt used. And be, because of that, I felt like I didn't, I shouldn't have to mention them. I still refer people to them. And whatever information I have, I still pass that information forward. And I'm praying for God to heal my heart on that because I'm supposed to forgive and let go. Because look, if it wasn't for them, the blessings that I have right now, which you're going to get to later on, it wouldn't have made possible. So that 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 test that I went through them, be it good, be it bad, was a testimony. So I'm still trying to, every day I'm healing from that. I'm healing from that. But I taught them this much, though. Do your due diligence. Once people leave, at least follow up with them for at least three to four months and make sure they're okay. And then after that three to four months cons um, consistently, do every six months or so. Because I was, it was on May 2nd would have been my year anniversary in my RV. I didn't spend that. Yeah. I went through financial hardship before that. They just don't know what, before I lost that RV, what sacrifices I made for me and my kids to keep, to last that long. You didn't do your due diligence. Yeah. I went to an area by BBL that I did not know. I can't come here. When I called, I could never get somebody. I leave voicemail. I couldn't get a call back. And when I get a call back, it was, oh, you're great. Is uh, What position are they hiring for? Mm. Yeah. So I'm thinking, you know, there's people that's in more need than I am. So let me just not worry or just drop my problem on them. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if you're helping me or built what I need to get back into the community, you don't, you just don't feed me to the wolves. Right. I'm at the point where like I'm trying to figure out a way. I know I'm going to I'm going to merge with Barbara um Austria mm -hmm. who runs the Kasimi um homeless outreach. Okay. And I've spoken to you as well that I would like to take um you on that journey For with sure. me. And I would like to find a way to just reach out and speak to some of um the homeless individuals and families and see what it is that they are lacking and how we can make being homeless a little bit easier for them. That's why I love that um video that yeah. you placed about that food man look. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that brought me to tears.
because the thing that makes me mad is when I go to a food pantry and you see me, I you take it, I open your trunks, especially with COVID, to put this in your um. I gotta step inside because my um, battery's dying. Because because due to COVID, we're doing a drive by, and I'm saying you cannot open my trunk because I have my kids sleeping on an air mattress in the oh, trunk. God. And you still turn around, you give me a bag of uncooked rice, not even some noise that I could throw yeah. in a microwave. You give me long grain mm. rice, spaghetti, yeah. spaghetti sauce, and yeah. I'm hungry. So I'm looking at that, I'm yeah, mad. Yeah, right. So now, and guess what? Even that, I said to myself, you can't be mad, you have food. Maybe that's all they have with COVID. You know, I, I'm very mm. humble. So now what I do, I went into my storage, I went and got me some pots and pans. And guess what I did? I got to eat. I'm not going to put this on the side of the curb because I get mad when I see homeless people that, that I'm going to speak to my people when I start hitting the streets yeah. about that. So you don't want to give it back to the community. Do not take the food and just leave it on the sidewalk because that doesn't help our situation right, at all. Right. Okay? Then that's why they can take away these programs and have no, re no remorse mm -hmm. because they say we don't need it or we take advantage of right. it. Right. So I want to um find out what it is that they need or they want. But with me, it's like I know the food system is not working. Right. It's not working. These food pantries are not they they can cater to families that are in homes, but not homelessness. And it made me mad because even then I didn't get mad. I went to my storage. I got my pots and pans out. I got my seasoning out. I just made a whole other bag and put that in the car. Yeah. So guess what I started doing? I used to go to Shingle Creek. I would pick up all the branches and stuff that would, and I would put them on the grill and I would start a fire and we would cook what was given. Yeah. Then guess what? Mm. We started being threatened and with fines and hara um, harassed by the park rangers because we're not allowed to cook there. Yeah. Cookie, I'm saying it's, I'm pretty much grilling, but with a pot. Right. But no, it's not the same because you have a pot. Right. It's like, so how are we supposed to eat? Yeah. A lot of people don't know about Blue Ribbon Mills at Chick-fil-A. Right. <laughs> Blue Ribbon Mill is a mill made for homeless people. Yeah. And a lot of these managers, I've had to, like, literally get, dare I say it, black on them. Yeah. Because I know this, and you're telling me you don't have it. So should I call corporate while I'm standing here right now? How do I know Blue Ribbon Mill? Yeah. And you don't. Which is a kid's mill right. from Chick-fil-A. Right. You come in, you ask for a Blue Ribbon Mill, you're entitled. You're supposed mm -hmm. to have that. A lot of homeless people don't know about that. I need to find out. You cannot sit in your office and deem what works for us. Right. You're not out here. Right. Yeah. You don't. I, I always love to shower. Yeah. Always love to shower because I don't like to be hot. I don't like to be funky. Mm -hmm. But I never, under, I never understood or I never knew, I should say, not understand how much impact a shower have on one's confidence that, and self-esteem. I, I was about to say because on a psychological level of homeless people when you're when you're homeless um, there's a lot of things you don't do. It, it, the barrier is, oh man I don't smell mm -hmm. good. Oh man I don't look good with my clothes right now. Oh man I look whatever, skinny, I don't look healthy, I look sick. Like So all that is a psychological barrier to where it's like, hey, I don't want to go, I, I feel like I'm going to embarrass myself if I go to an interview right now. I'm going to embarrass myself if I try to, you know, I whatever. So yeah, like you, you have that mentality. Like even when, it, when I was in San Francisco trying to, uh, even when I was trying to get my food stamps at the time, and it's another thing that I want to try and change. At the time, they didn't, um, I, I didn't have an address, and I was saying, well, I don't have an address. Can I just pick it up at City Hall? Like, can you? Can I just be able to pick it up? They don't allow right. that. You have to have an address. So luckily, luckily, I had I, I asked my principal if I could just use the job, the school that I was at. I was like, can I just send mm -hmm. my mail to this address? And it, and it worked. Like, luckily, they didn't catch it. But it's like, even just anytime I try to go for I'll apply for interviews, like, uh, hey, I don't have... I don't have an ad like that. That's like when you know, I don't have one like, and it's and just having to do that all the time and having to say that you you get and you get you don't you don't want to have that conversation. Embarrassed. You're embarrassed because it's like you're in a room. Like I used to be in rooms in the school, um, in meetings and the kids or whatever. They're like hell yeah, so where do you stay at? And I'm like, 
I couldn't even. I, I used to say, I, all around. I, 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 I say around the corner. All man. around. I say to Sally, I just say around, right. yeah, around, around the way. And it's just because you don't want to have that type of conversation with, uh, uh, it's just psychologically, you just don't want to have that. You don't want to feel like the odd well. You don't want the extra sympathy. You don't want the, you know, just all that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I get the psychological barrier that is. I don't want to be a charity kid. Yeah, all of that. that I don't want to be nobody's shit. Yeah. And then after a while, it's like, okay, after so many days, they may not be thinking it. Yeah. You, you you already built yourself the your false self-confidence right. just to make it there. Right. And then your heart, your heart, just like, you know, it's okay. You, you got this. You got this. And I'm a big believer, like, you know, God's time is the right time. Right. And I speak life into my, into my, um, and I speak life into my life and uh, positivity into it. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, your flesh, you can't feel, but feel what you feel. And people True. can be so mean, and not everyone can hide the facial expressions. You understand? Right, right, right. It's like okay, interview two. I went looking better than you know the last two interviews, right. but after the fourth interview, my my ego, my self esteem, everything was just chopped. Yeah, I didn't want to go anywhere anymore. Yeah. Then then that this depression. Yeah. yeah. It's just depression. Then when you tell, you're trying to explain that to people that's not going through it, they're making it seem like you're crazy. Yeah, nah. Because, oh, you had a chance to get a job. No, I know that they're not going to call yeah. me. I just went to the same thing three months ago. So now me trying to sit here, and then you got the heat, the humidity of Florida yeah. that just wants to yeah. say, here you go. Yeah. It's just like, these are the things, like, you can, you talking about, oh, you have, um, you have a food pantry, like, okay. First thing I asked was, who has the showers? Mm -hmm. So much homeless people, who has a shower? Oh, father and son or whatever under the sun was, or yeah. they've been closed. Okay, now, PC, the same commissioner. Mm -hmm. You've been promising me this up for five years now. And from my understanding, it was going to be a whole building for 24 hours where you had a place where people could shower 24 hours mm -hmm. whenever they're ready, get job training whenever they're ready, do laundry whenever they're ready, yeah, the, the thing and the, now the thing about that one is that she did try it, but the uh, the other commissioners uh, uh, blocked her from doing it, or they didn't vote. Cause you know when it comes, it got to be the five or three out of the two had to vote for it to pass. So I think that's what happened with that that initiative. I don't know. And I told BS, I feel you. I'm look, we okay. here, we here. <laughs> she doesn't hold. She doesn't hold. She doesn't hold right. the power. But my thing is, I'm very blunt and I'm very bold and I'm going to call BS. I'm yeah. sorry. That might still be right. But my question is, the leeway that you got right now, because she called herself having a hub. Yeah. That hub that she have right now came after that $100,000 check was given to Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Now, just stay with me, please. Okay. Just think about, let's go with the one, let's go, let's go with the one that's on Main Street and 192. Look how big that building is. Right. The Salvation Army thrift. Mm. You mean to tell me half of that building couldn't be turned into something, uh, some sort of a hub, or at least a place where they can shower and do laundry, or some place where they can get job training or budgeting skills? Right. Now that we finally got the hub, it's under Salvation Army. Why didn't we get one of Salvation Army's building and merge half of that building? We went back on, onto Christian Ministries. Mm which had minimum space to begin with. Yeah. And then now you're just putting everybody in the same melting pot from drug users to family to, to, to mental health. Yeah. And then now what's going to happen? You're going to have issues. Yeah. You're going to have issues because the people's going to clash. They're already frustrated. And then now you're taking, you're stripping them of all their privileges. Right. Right. right yeah. And 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 I think that's also a thing that a lot of just people alone, as long as well as people who are in leader, leadership and whatnot, even in the nonprofit, I think that they don't understand the variations of different homelessness. So like you got you know the transitional, you got your episodic, you got your chronic, you got the mental health, mm -hmm. you got you know all those are varied. Yeah, There's levels. levels. So I, me, I consider myself. I was a transitional homeless person because I was. I want to have my car, and I was in the. I was in the middle of moving jobs, and that's how I ended up. I didn't get paid enough. 
I tried every time I try to apply to a place, I got to make three times the rent. Never made three times the rent over there. It was the average one bedroom was thirty five hundred mm -hmm. uh, for a, a studio, thirty five hundred for a studio. Trust me, I'm from New York. I know. So yeah, you know. So yeah. So you, 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 Cali, California, same way. So I was I was only making uh, about fifteen hundred, but eighteen hundred two thousand dollars a month. But the rent was thirty five hundred. Can this have been enough? So I place? could. There's no way. Yeah, this have enough. Even, even though I made thirty five hundred, I didn't make three times that. I didn't make nine thousand. So it's like it's just, it was just it's just ridiculous, you know. But um. And if you make that much, you gotta you gotta decide between it, rent, it, food, it, insurance, exactly. gas, toiletries. Exactly. Like so, that people don't unless you went through it or go through it, then you don't understand the type of decisions. You had to make, and once that, and once you don't have that mentality, then it's just it's just difficult. Now there is some there are some leaders that I know that really do try to understand, even though they never went through it. They do try to sit down and talk, but when it comes to like when it's people who don't try to literally sit down, and talk, not election time, because if they only sit down and talk during election oh, season, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, no, I'm no, good I, on I, that. I give you no. I t I, I'm talking about me. Per I know some people who. Who personally, not not say I say with county, but like well, I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, New Orleans. Okay. Not, and there are some leaders that they're either in, they already been elected, or not even not even running or nothing like that, and they just truly care. Hello. You know what I'm saying so. Uh, those people are like the ones that should be in office. You know what I'm saying? Those are the ones who should be because they actually care. Like even if they never been through it, they actually truly care in there working for nonprofits or they're volunteering and they're actually within the homeless yes. community. But, you know, how politics my, goes is just... Uh, my thing is... My thing is, if you don't have empathy or you lack um, compassion for the humankind, you don't need to be in politics. True. I don't need nobody that sits behind an, um, behind an, um, behind a desk to make my life decisions for me or tell me what works for me. Right. Especially in a little city like this, like, I'm not asking you to come out every day. Right. Before you pass these laws and before you sit there and tell me what works for me and mine, spend a half an hour with me at least. Yeah. Spend a half an hour. You know, you know, there, there's a. I'm telling you. There's a thing that they do in, uh, it's in Georgia, in Atlanta, because you know Atlanta got a big homeless population too. It's where you spend the day or spend the night with with the homeless camp. As if you're homeless, right? So it's a, it's like mm -hmm. it's like a it's a nonprofit that that feeds the homeless, but they uh they host like a day to say, hey, we're, you're gonna be we're gonna show you how it is to be homeless. So they put you like, okay, you have mm -hmm. no, they take away everything, you have no nothing, just the clothes on your back, and then you you know you're with homeless mm -hmm. people, and they literally teach you like, oh no, nah, you can't. This is where we use the bathroom. This is how. You have no money, you know what I'm saying? So that's how you were to get money, like, and that, and people like when they go through that, they're like, oh man, like I never, you know, I, I they take a lot of things for granted, and now they know now because they spent one just this one day, it's a life changing thing. I think that's one thing I want to bring. Can I tell you one thing? Yeah. Go ahead. Can I tell you? Can I be honest with yeah. you? I went, I went through that project. Okay. God put me through that project. The project is consuming. Oh yeah. There's another reason why I can't be bitter about yeah. that situation. Because I'm from New York where I see, you know, oh, you, they dance for the change. They yeah. do all types of, they they do tricks for a little bit, some, yeah, some strange yeah, for the change, yeah, tricks yeah. for the change. And my mentality was always, look, you can get your butt up and go to work just like I'm right, going to work. Right. Like, I ain't supporting your habit. Right. Like, I ain't supporting your habit. Look, that right, stigma. Sure. Yeah. But now, look, look at God humbled my behind and said, look, yeah. pause. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Pause. Pause. And now I promise you, if that's the last thing I do, the last breath I have, that's what I'm making it. I need these people to understand. Disney is the devil's play um playground. Yes. Stop selling your soul. And to me, it's a problem that they make billions. I don't know how much they invest into um for Simi, I don't know that much yet. And I promise yeah. you, yet. I'm I'm still looking yeah. into that. But there's no way that you're selling your soul for half of your residents. To be struggling like that. For what? We happen to take care of home first. Courtesy start home. Your first ministry is your home base. Right. And then, again, 
people literally in another thing that makes me mad. Um, and that brought me tears. And there was days that I wanted to burn down Osceola mm -hmm. County. When I see people literally walk past homeless families, myself included, mm -hmm. I mean literally past. Some of them will lift their feet and hop over you to go feed stray cats. Oh, and won't ask you if you want a cup of water. Oh, man. Yeah, that's wild. i never seen that. That's wild. I've seen that. Until this day, faithfully, I even took the reporters. I said, do you see this? Do you see every day like clockwork? Yeah. And every day like clockwork, this day to see a city and never once to say, oh, here's a bottle of water. That's crazy. That's wild, man. I mean, she, she'll complain that my kids are outside stretching from being cooped up in a car. She'll complain about that. Mm. But won't make no eye contact. The McDonald's that we set behind up. No matter where I go, if I use your bathroom, I don't care if I came in there and it was dirty by the time I leave, because yeah. I don't want to screw that um opportunity up. Guess what I do? Mm. I clean it. Yeah. Same thing goes for McDonald's. I clean yeah. it. I leave it cleaner. You've seen me clean it as a manager, and you told me I'm going. I'm trying to get your people's out of a job, yeah. right? I've always made sure I have a dollar i don't care if it's just that dollar and i'm also using the um the mcdonald's app so i can get a free fry with yeah. it but i have a dollar to buy any size drink yeah. right yes yes honey. and i'm still bringing you business i'm respectful of the property i clean my mess and other people's mess i don't even use your bathroom since i'm using your parking lot yeah. Big good morning, me up and down. Good afternoon, me afternoon, me up and down. And then, do you know, just very um a few days before the story hit, I was um sleeping. My husband didn't have enough um gas to get to the um to work, so his boss sent somebody in the work truck to pick him up. I was sleeping in the car with my kid. I heard bang, bang, bang on my window. I jumped up. It was three police officers. Wow. What they say? You know why it took it's three. Huh? What, what did they say? The sheriff. That McDonald's no longer want me here. What? Just earlier that day, we bought um we bought food and then um they gave us a ten piece um nuggets yeah. and a large fry for free. I've never been rude to you. My kids has never been rude to you. I'm human. Yeah. You didn't want me here. You've had no problem saying good morning, good afternoon. You've told me not to clean your premises. Right. You know, you got people, like, you couldn't even at least tell me right. that. I had to wake up to the police. Now, I've had encounters with, um, since COVID happened, I was behind the Dollar Tree next to the old Nike um, yeah. outlet. I had, an, I had two officers pulled up. They ran our tags. They ran our names. Everything was legit. They said, just be safe. Sorry, there's nothing that they can do for us. I've had officers that threatened to call DCF, and I've told them because one thing I did say, I did do, I reached out to um, Marcos Lopez, yeah. and I did reach out to PC, and I asked them, is it illegal for me to be in my vehicle with my kids? Will I lose my kids? Because I need to know now so I can know what my right, options right. are. And I was told that it's not illegal. So with that being said, I've been told that they will call DCF and I said, under what grounds? Look, I have a whole dumb cooler here filled with food. I have water. I have sanitizers. I have repellents. I have toothbrushes. Like, still have exfoliating cream. Like, what are you talking about? They're not going their homework. My son's still on a roll, still in gifted class. Same thing goes for my daughter. They did not miss not one day. They, oh. they achieved all their assignment and they was returned on time. Right. So what are you threatening me with right now? Yeah. So it's just this, you don't know, who you, and then God forbid, like, you know, I can be a little hot wire too. And I'm just waking up to that, and I know me and my kids just, just sleeping. And you never know what officers you're going to get. Right. You understand? Right, right, right. These are all the risks that you put me and my kids, my kids to. And it's just like, and instead of you having a conversation with me right. and ask me, because you don't know if I could afford a, um, to pay you a monthly rent. I just can't afford a weekly stay at a hotel right. with a deposit. Yeah. You might just have come to find out after the officers came and they explained that to me. I said, look, officer, this is the situation. I don't drive. Yeah. At all. At all. 
And this is a stick. My son, who's 12, can drive automatic, but this is a stick, and he's yeah. 12. So I'm telling you now, my husband will have to come all the way back from work, and he's working in Orlando at Weingart Elementary putting up lightning yeah. rods. So he would have to lose about an hour over or over an hour's pay to move this car. Yeah. Okay. One of the officers shrugged his shoulder and said, it, it, do what you have to do. The other officer looked in the car and he shook his head. Go ahead, mama. And he said, nah, if you don't mind, I'm not going to let him um, lose a day or an hour's pay considering our situation. Wow. I'll move the car. He moved the car. He spoke to us. He asked, he said, he, he looked at me. He said, look, what is your... What is your what's your goal? What are your plans? And I told him the situation. He said, "I pray for you and whatnot." Because at the time, it was on um Tuesday, and that Friday we had just paid a deposit to get into a room in downtown Kissimmee, uh -huh. the Sapphire in Dakin on Dakin. Yeah. So we were just content and happy with that, and was able to pay the lady five hundred a month. Uh -huh. That particular officer, he spoke to us. He was nice about it. He was like, "Look, I can't do anything. I see you guys have food here." But it, it smelled like it was kind of left out all night, so it's not good. I see it's Bravo's food, and it was yeah. poor. He went and he bought his breakfast. And they asked, um, apparently the manager asked um, him, why didn't they completely move me off the premises? It's the McDonald's on Siesta Lago. There's an arcade right to the left yeah. of it. So the officer took me off their premises and put me in that parking lot. And the manager still felt the need to say something about it. And then he went, he said, I had to explain to her the situation. And, you know, y'all not even going to be here that long. Matter of fact, I, yeah, it's just for two more days or whatnot. And that we found a place. Oh, I was renting a place. If you had spoke to me instead of calling the police, right. you would have known that I'm not just a bum. I'm here. You, I smoke cigarettes. I'm not going to lie that I don't smoke mm -hmm. cigarettes. But I don't even smoke cigarettes on your premises out of respect. You know, I don't want no stigma right. attached to that. And you see my kids, we're all, all usually watching um, cyber flicks on our devices. I play with my kids like a big kid. You can see that we're a family that's struggling. The first thing you want to do is call the police. You understand? You pass judgment like we didn't have money. I'm just like, people need to understand, this, especially after corona. My thing is this. Look. That little coronavirus thing right there, and I do mean it in that sense, because that. Yeah. If no one, if everyone didn't learn nothing out of it, look, Corona didn't know race. Right. It didn't know bank account status. Yo, it didn't care your religion. Everybody was under house arrest together. Yeah. Everybody was waiting for that economic um, um, stimulus check yeah. together. Everybody was wondering what happened to um, the unemployment site together. Right. We're all a paycheck away from being homeless. Right. Stop, stop. I'm not saying give your money to everybody. Right. But if, you, if you're not trying to give money, give some clothes. Donate to the proper yeah. charities. Hello goes a long way. Yeah. That hello makes people feel human again. Maybe I was going to slice my wrist in the fact that you acknowledge me. Make me feel humane. Yeah. And that just gave me strength for another right. day. That's all yeah. I'm asking. That's all I'm asking. And if you can... Fear. If you can, if you don't want to give them no 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 money, because you don't want to know what they want to do, and you really want them to have a shower, and that's what they're asking for, put them in a room. Yeah. Put them in a room, because nine times out of ten, even if they look in the smoke, drink, or whatever, when they get into that room, they're gonna forget because they're gonna take a shower, or they're gonna know they have a room and they're gonna hustle that, but that room will not go to waste, and it's gonna it's gonna take them yeah, a long yeah. way. And that that's one thing that people do. I think they just think that oh. They gotta give financially, but when in reality, now if you if you give the product, if you give the the soap, if you give the uh uh, uh the drinks, uh, if you get the food, if you if you if you purchase the thing that you you know they need, or not even even if you don't know, right? Because some people just don't know. If you just take the time, hey, mm -hmm. what is it? What's your most? What's your top concern? Just, you know, what's your top thing that you need right now, Kurt? Mm -hmm. Just asking that simple question. That could that could change yeah. a person's life, you know what I'm saying? Like that could change a homeless person's life. Uh, sometimes the like, how you feeling, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm telling you, there was days that like, okay, I don't want to add stress to my husband. Yeah. I don't want to stress my kids because like, my seven year old daughter and my my twelve year old son is telling me, Mom, it's okay, we're good, we're fine, you're not a failure. That talks at my heart. And if I feel like I want to cry, I can't cry to them. Right. 
But if I say good morning to you, you just looked at me, you roll your eyes, it's like, damn, that hurts. And I'm already in my yeah. feelings. That's just my slight, you know, just a simple how you're doing yeah. or just a, a smile. Yeah. That that's, that alone is an assistant because that smile, the fact that you acknowledge me, I'm like, oh, wow, I'm seen. And you smile. It wasn't a, you didn't turn your yeah, face up yeah, at me. Yeah. You didn't like, you didn't look at me sideways like you have an opinion. The fact that you that gives me a little bit of value, yeah. and I'm able to forget my problems for a day. Yeah. Nah. I'm not. I that's, that's how I'm starting. Mm. Compassion mm. and kindness go a long they way. Do. Now, if you have any politicians on your on your mm. page, they need to get familiar with my face and my voice. Yeah. Because God has opened doors for me because I took my pride aside and I said I didn't have any way or shape or form to make any changes. Yeah. But I told my story with put, by putting pride aside wow. and I told I told it raw as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that alone is making changes now. All of a sudden you have commissioners, you have people that's reaching out to me, yeah. and I've been reaching out to these people. Right, right. And, you know and that, I'm that, waiting, that, and now it's on my time, for my terms, and I'm making my point. Right. Yeah, That that that's how it happens, man. Like, as soon, like, you know, I've been knocking on doors, especially with the, with the, with, the, with my video, I've been knocking on doors about that whole idea since mm -hmm. 2016. Um, wow. And I made that video a while back, and I put it on my Instagram, and I put it on my YouTube. Still no reach out. I went to I went to Congress. I went to offices in all, in all of Osceola County. All, anyone who could, who can do something, I went to all of them. Uh, great video, great you know da da da. da. We gonna look back into it. But no, they, it, 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 we, they loved it. But they got to figure out what they got to figure out what they got to do. And I laid out. I, I think I did do my three billion. Call the restaurants up and pass the bill and hey, make listen, it happen. I, I, what what what's so complicated I about that? I did my due diligence too on research and or presentation. And all. You yes, you did. You broke it I, I, down, I, and I had even more. I didn't fit into the video, but I had even more, as in the the, the PDF file, uh, everything, and where you can actually find the act and what what page on like one hundred twenty six you can find the page of where the law said the governor can go ahead and give the authority down to the to the county, and that's all I want. And I'm not even I'm not even asking to increase anything in the food stamp at all. All I'm asking is uh, give uh, oh. to the, You're helping yeah. them save money, to be honest. Yeah. You're helping them minimize a serious yeah. problem. Let me be frank mm. with you, my dear. You are too sweet of a bean. You are too humble mm. and polite. Yeah. And I've learned a long time ago, humbleness don't take you everywhere you need yeah. to go. Politeness don't take you anywhere you need to go. I've tried that mm -hmm. route. And right now, there I don't have that to get. I'm humble as yeah. heck. And the fact that these people are insulting me and now want to have a moment to spare with me when I've been asking for that moment for seven yeah. years is making me angry. Yeah. Let me give you an example about what you said, or oh, they don't know mm -hmm. how. I was told that we couldn't um, homeschooling, virtually virtual schooling was impossible. Yeah. Working from home was impossible, yeah. right? Furloughs was impossible. It's a COVID-19. All the impossible became yeah. possible. Sure Correct. Did. They move when they want to move. They make things. If it's not beneficial for them, if it's not putting more money, and I emphasis on more yeah. money in their pocket, it's not worth it. If it's just a consistent of the same income mm -hmm. or amount, then it's not worth it. My thing is this. I'm at the point where... No is not enough for me. And no, okay, I'm going to hear no now. I'm coming back next month. Before you tell me no, I need to see the numbers that you move around. Right. Don't just blindly tell me no. Because right. we could go into more, like I said, I'm irritated by this $100,000. That salvation on me, I'm, I'm irritated. Yeah. And there's other organization that was given. And it's just like, I've been on these grounds. I've been literally... I've gone two cities over sometimes to get food because my, my, my city tells me, oh, I'm only entitled to food once a month. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. I've been to these places and I know 
for a fact that this will save you guys money and it can be done. You guys choose not to. I don't want to hear no more. You guys work for us as politicians. Now it's time you hear us as taxpayers. Hear my cry. Hear my voice. I'm not taking no no more. Show me where you do your due diligence. Because everything you come with to me with, I'm a rebuttal. For me to rebuttal, I need to, I need to know what I'm going to prepare for because I'm not taking no more blind words. Yeah. I am not angry, but I have a passion that can be taken as anger. Mm. We, we are human. We do exist. When I tell you my family is one of hundreds, mm. hundreds, I've seen newborn babies yeah. in these streets. Mm fresh out the hospital and I'm saying to myself no social worker was put social worker see that your your address from prenatal or the last ER visit while he was pregnant is changing his hotel nobody sat down with you and trying to find a, 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 a place for you they just release you out into the woods like that I know family members right now that I can take you to that that's camped with babies that's under one years yeah. old that's ridiculous and another thing that irritates me not too many people cater to families, um, kids. Right. There's no clothes to be given. There's no formula. There's no diapers. Community Hope Center is great for that. Down to crayons, notebooks mm -hmm. they give. I love them for that. And I miss the crap out of Claudia because she was like she was like a second mother to my kids. May she rest in peace. But these are the things that I'm just saying. It's like, it frustrates me. It frustrates me. You have companies like Walmart. Come on now. You're a mega, you're a mega, mega yeah. company. I, I work the, I work for Walmart, and I, we have stuff that we just drop with a little debt on it, and they tell us throw it away, or we get to keep it because the insurance. Yeah. So, you can find a way or form like as a city, you can challenge Walmart. You can challenge Walmart to do something. You can challenge Walmart to take that. Walmart just don't care. They got insurance out the yin yang. They're gonna get paid. Yeah. When I worked at Corners, they threatened my job. They threatened everything because I was giving away free chicken and they was throwing it away. Yeah. Guess what? I don't care. What is the problem with giving free chicken away when we have homeless people right there in our parking lot, right up the street at the Circle K, um, Shell Circle K? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't I give it away? Because the food is over three hours and they, we don't want to get sued. Guess what? You know what I did when they told me mm -hmm. that, Alvin? I went home. I didn't even have a printer. I wrote up a waiver and I emailed it to myself and I promise you I took ten dollars and I double printed um the little waiver on um twice yeah. on one page on one eight by eleven and I sat there, yeah. I went to work early. I sat in that break room right in front of the human resource um mm -hmm. manager and I fold my pants in half and I cut them and I flung one on her desk and I told her, We have a waiver now and I will make sure everybody yeah. sign it before I give them the right. What's the uh, problem? I, What's your next I, I, excuse? Now, there's no guarantee. Yeah, I said that same thing in Atlanta. When um, cause the and what thing about it is in Atlanta, the KFC, the KFC used to do it. They used to um, basically said with the same thing you was talking about, where they have to throw away because the the business doesn't want to get sued stuff like that. What the KFC business owner used to do in Atlanta, he says, okay, we'll throw it away. So, but what he did. He put the food still in the box, still everything as if he was a servant. Put it in a trash bag, and then and then, and then put, put it, it out in, in the in the in the in the back. It's not left. I you know, it's, not, it's not by the trash. It's not by the dumpster. But it's just you put it in the back to say, "All right, hey, yeah. at nine o'clock we close. This is trash. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. it's just gonna be in there. So that's like, even though it might have been wrong." But he found a way. But it still didn't. Really yeah, you know, say he found a way to go ahead and give them the food, and he did. He threw it away, and in, and in reality, he did. He put it next to the dumpster. He it, did what the company it, required exactly him to do. Now, Once you're closed and you leave, whatever right. happens is beyond exactly. your control, not exactly. your concern. Whatever happens, if, if the if the homeless people want to go and go through the trash, where they where where they what, what some of them do. If there has to be happens to be good food, KFC in the bag, that's on them, right? You know what I'm saying? So, it's 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 it's, the, it's certain people that that are good for the community, and he was one he was one of those people that's for the community because it's a big homeless population in Atlanta. So, 
he's one of those type of people. But, you know, certain corporations are not going to have those type of people because they're scared of, you know, losing their job or whatever the case may be. So sometimes, a lot of times, I can't blame certain people because it, it takes a lot of courage to do to do things oh, for, yeah. you know, the community. It just takes a lot of courage for, for, for to do, to go out of your way and to, 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 to help. Right to help somebody less fortunate and put your job per se at risk. So I sometimes understandable. Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not one to miss, especially after going through something like this to mess with anyone's livelihood, but we have to understand Martin Luther King's um, house got burnt how many times? Yeah. You understand? Look, a start starts somewhere. Sure. Now you see how I was doing it. You was mm -hmm. doing it. Imagine if we was all working for the same company and we was all working the same shift. You cannot fire right, your whole right, crew. Right. The change got to start somewhere. And then sometimes it, it sounds yeah. good. And sometimes it's just an intimidation process. Yeah, you yeah, understand? Because yeah. when um Papa did that with Papa Isu, a lot of people called me on one night to Chicken Lady or Ma. And these people that's older than me or my mm -hmm. age, they call me that because I love to take care of people. Like, I'm everybody's man. If I could, if I could, Whatever I can do for you, I will do my shirt, whatever. And I tell my kids too, y'all be all right. This is nothing. We don't need it. They need it. Yeah. So with that being said, it's like this. this the change starts nah, within us. Sure, nah. It starts within us. And then, you know, I'm not asking nobody to sacrifice, but sometimes we got to know when to call yeah. BS. And the first thing I used to tell people all the time, okay, you'll fire me. I've been working for 18 months. I'll collect unemployment. Until that un um, unemployment kicked in or runs out, mm -hmm. I'm going to call Telemundo, yeah. Univisio, PBS, CBS, NBC, and tell them in the first person to bite, I'm just going to be vocal and be fighting. You're, you're firing me because I have a heart. Right. right, right, right. And then I'm helping you get more for your bucks too because this is money that you spent. I don't care if it was four cents for that head of lettuce and we're paying a dollar for it. You still spent money as a company on it. And why not find a church? Or an organization to donate with. That's what I'm saying. We don't have to physically feed yeah. people, but why be so wasteful? That's that's one thing about. I think America as a whole is just it's wasteful when it comes to 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 a lot of things. Wasteful, like when it comes to a lot of not just food, but a lot of things in in, in this world. Um, I want to really meet with you because right now, um. Like real life, nah, yeah, like sure. seriously, because I have a few ideas. Because yeah. I'm really seriously, like I'm about to the next meeting. I'm going to, and it's just like it's going to be with a bang, and I'm going to call everybody's BS. Yeah, yeah. Like meet me halfway. Huh. I told you about the um mobile shower. Yeah. I found it. I found a company already that's big in my heart or whatnot. But my question is, people's commissioner and all the other yeah. ones, all the names included, and especially those that are being reelected. This is the plan. I will provide a modular. I will provide a mm -hmm. mobile. Somebody meet me halfway, give me a land. Yeah. If not, I get the land. You guys give me what I was going to provide. Yeah. Meet me halfway. I'm not asking you to come out your way. Just give me the zoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And work with me. I'm ready to call BS on the land. Oh, nah, yeah, we can definitely meet up for sure because I got a, um, I got a plan for the mobile showers as well. From uh, what they they got out there, and uh, I got the whole layout. Actually, they have it. They have it successfully in San Francisco. Um, I have one of a fifth wheel. I was looking it up. I don't know where that one was done, but it was a okay. fifth wheel. It was a total of eight showers in yeah. there. And then the front part of the fifth wheel was used for washer and dryer. So you had a shower. You had yeah. like literally four showers on this side, four showers on that side, and in the front part where the master bedroom yeah. was. You had two stacks of one show and okay. dryer. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's the one that I seen is something similar to that, but it was just it was just shower stalls. It wasn't the wash and dryer. It was just shower stalls. But what they did was they had a bus. They re they re renovated. They re uh, they gutted out a bus, put the showers in it, and then they had like two vans behind it, and they did their routes. Like they go, they went to either homeless camps or whatever. And they did their routes, and then they'll stop, but they'll have them take the showers, and they'll have like kind of just to take care um, bags, uh, you know, give them some food, snacks, 
uh, get a haircut. They have a barber on there, haircut stylist too. Mm-hmm. Like, and they did like every Monday, Wednesday. They had different routes, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or go to one area. Then Tuesday, Thursday, go to different areas, like kind of like a regular bus route. So, um, but yeah, when we meet, we'll we'll definitely uh, you know chop it up and and, and kind of lay out a bunch of plans and. Yeah. You know, we can, we can. I'm gonna ask because I know you're a prayer yeah. warrior, and I've seen pics of your mom. Your mom looked like she, 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 she just, she just lay hands <laughs> on people and just like she didn't yeah, see. So I don't know her per se, but I, I do. I believe in vibrations yeah, yeah. and light and all as like, and I'm big on that now. It's yeah. just like I, I read her energy just it spoke to my heart. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying this to say like I need all the prayer warriors out there. I need prayer because yeah. right now. I have a fire that's lit under me yeah. and it's not going on. It's personal because of the journey. Yeah. It's personal because when I didn't think I was somebody, God just blessed me upon this. And the first thing he put in my heart was to just not right. take the blessing and be silent. Right, right, right. Selfish was never in my heart, but not to be silent about it. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, I, I'm, I, I'm going to say it out loud. I have taken it upon mm-hmm. myself to fight as hard as I can within the next three years to have a homeless um, shelter in Kissimmee. I done laid hands on my property. I done claimed it. Since I've been here in Kissimmee, I don't know what I wanted that property for, but I want it. You know the, um, going um, from 192 once you pass Park Inn where the old Radisson used to be? The old Radisson, yep. The old Radisson, yep. You're going up to I-4 on the right-hand side on to go yeah. Orlando, mm-hmm. going east. You know that abandoned property, the pink property? That's like over seven acres. It's on the right-hand uh, side, right next to Park Inn. It's been abandoned for years. Um, I think I, I haven't been down that way in a little bit. So I, I think I, know, I remember a pink building that was never really didn't have nothing there. It's like a community. Yeah. It has over 200 units. Oh, word. Over 200 units. Yeah, I, I, I probably... I, I want that unit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I got I to I I, go right down there and see and check it out. No, baby, thank you. I want that property. I want that property. I purposely chose that property because I want to be under Disney's nose but not yeah. close enough. But I want them to know that we exist. I want them to know that we as humans outside of our circumstances, because nine times out of nine times out of ten, just like this whole George, we are angry and bitter because of our circumstances right. or our situation. Right. Now you stop trying to shove us into the, the hood side of Orlando yeah. on Mercy or right. Pine Hill and treat us like human. We can behave. We just need some love and attention and what what For we sure. deserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to I already I started speaking to people that does yeah. security. And that's when to do security. My thing is this. I want that property. I want to have transitional yeah. housing completely. Yeah. Yes. Free yeah. of charge. It's one year. You get to stay there for one year. I don't charge mm-hmm. you rent. We're, we're going to take care of the property. We're going to mm-hmm. garden. We're going to teach you how to do um, re, um, job trade yeah. trade schooling, job training, psych, um, psychiatrists, yeah. therapists. Yeah. Um, Financial literacy. Everything. Right. The yeah. works. The works. And, and move, you know, food pantry, yeah. all of that. If I got to have a um, child care services, I'll pay somebody to take the classes, be it online or whatever qualifications yeah. that I need to provide that child care so I could send these people out on job right. training or schooling or stop giving us food and sending us about our way. A lot of us just get frustrated and, and don't want to say it no more because no matter how much we say it, yeah. We don't want a hand out. We want a hand up. Because uh, yeah. we come here and you're making us feel less than. We don't want that. But you're not giving us anything that's educating us how not to be in this situation. Oh, right. again. You're not even trying to say, okay, from 535, which I know yeah. is impossible, just a yeah. geography. <laughs> uh, Let's just say from 535 on this hotel can be extended state where you don't have to check out every 14 or 21 right. day for Disney's yeah. sake. Because when you do that, you lose half of these things because you don't have that much time. Half of these hotels don't let you check in before, um, at 11 after, after three o'clock. Yeah. 
and then you're leaving. I've done established a rapport with all these people at the front desk, housekeepers and whatnot. And then it's like, okay, after the first two weeks, some of these hotels, okay, they drop your rate or they excuse yeah. taxes. So now I'm going back to paying a higher risk because what, Disney un feels uncomfortable? Yeah. Yeah. You're uncomfortable, you don't want to see families in the hotels. Where's the transitional housing? Where's my uh, shelter? Yeah, 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 not for sure. I'm uncomfortable being seen by tourists that's looking up at me sideways and turning their nose right, up at me. Right, right. And I'm, I mean, I'm, and I, I'm even more uncomfortable that they're here because because of them I can't get a hotel room because it's too expensive or I'm not allowed to be in it for too long. Right. Yeah. But why make your residence that's that's going to be your employers or you know, or employees angry or bitter? Disney, even with COVID-19, before they shut down, I have a friend of mine that works there. People were throwing up in there. They were still getting paid under $9 an hour to clean, and they had no PPE. Yep. I know. I had. I got a good friend that worked for them, too. It's, it's, they they don't feel treated right at all, so I'm already... I, it, it, it's sad, man. It's sad of certain people that certain companies and certain people and there's in leadership roles of what they, what they do to their employees okay. and uh, that's why I just do what I do, and I know I do it the proper way because I think about the people first. Because if you treat your people good, your business will always be good. Like that's why I really like small town businesses that actually it has a small amount of exactly. number as a family business because everything always runs smoothly because it's like smoothly. if they're treating everyone fairly and it makes it feel more yeah. intimate too, even with the yeah, customers. Exactly. So I mean that, and and that should go on with government and the people that should go on with anything like it's any relationship should go on like that but um <laughs> we're definitely we're definitely gonna um meet up because i want to link up with you especially before you know you go in and uh uh introduce any of the projects that you want to introduce so you know i could definitely help out whichever yes. case may be and, and kind of connect you and if we could merge anything yeah. like i said um i would i'm sorry i didn't mean no, to cut you off if we could merge anything, because it seems like we have Same the goal. passion for the yeah. same cause by Same all yeah, not for sure. It's one thing I admire about you, the way that you, you care for your community. You care for people, period. It's it's genuine. It's, be it text, be it a video, be it whatever, you can see the smile. Sometimes I read your post, there's no picture, and I can just see <laughs> right, the yeah. smile in the face. That's that's a beautiful thing. You understand, like the light in you, and I tell you all the time, you're destined thank, for greatness. Thank, you are maybe made me. If you don't get mayor, mayor's not for you. You you're oh, greater yeah, than yeah, that. For sure. Maybe you're just too humble. No, seriously, maybe if, if yeah. it's just that you're greater than that, and it would have been an insult to just yeah. give you mayor status. But I tell yeah. people, AC yeah. all the way. That's my mayor. You understand? That's yeah, my mayor. Sure. That's my mayor. And I and I just want to tell you, I applaud you. I don't know if you if you understand. I'm a person. I like vibrations. Yeah. I don't know if you remember how we met. Um, I think it was, it was a friend as a friend that tagged you in, in one of my my posts. And she, I know she came to one of my campaign events. I met her from there, and then she was like, "Yeah, she tagged you in in a hair post." And right in a hair post, yeah. My, in a yeah, hair, hair post. post, yeah. I was like, yeah, okay. And then. Yeah. And then I was like, is he serious? I was really going to take you up on the offer. And I was asking her about you. And then she goes, check yeah. him out. He's actually running for mayor. I'm like, oh, black men running for mayor. Oh, let me yeah. see what he's about. Then I was like, okay. Then I sent you a request. And I was like, okay, boom. And it was just like, yo, this brother, man, he's going to, he's going places. He's going places. He's going Appreciate places. That, man. Um, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And, and, you know, I really think that everything that you're doing, like, the people like you, I feel like, needs to be in, like, leadership roles. Not to say it doesn't have to be working for a company or anything, but I just, I think people who go through things have a voice that can make, that can make the positive change in companies and government and, you know, everything, because those people who are in leadership roles never really went through things that you went through, things that I went through. Because I can't, like, I can't even speak, I can speak for... Uh, you on a homeless side or on a transitional side, but I can't speak as being homeless with kids because I don't have no kids. So it's like I can't. That's a whole different, different struggle. Because you got now you got people depending Ooh. on you. 
I didn't have no one depending on me, so I can. I was able to move and not trip because I know it's I'm taking care of me. But I know if I had children, I would have. I would have to. My decision that I made when I was home would have to be completely different. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but that's why mm-hmm. it's like people like you, like, and I want to thank you also just for you coming on to my live. Um, and, and, and thank you, and sorry for the delay. That's all love. Thank you for sharing your story because it takes a lot of courage uh, to do that. Like it takes a lot of uh, courage to have that and confidence within yourself to go ahead and share your story. But I thank you for doing that because, and that's why I do these uh, live shows because I know that your story, I know that my story can connect to people who don't have that voice, to people who don't have the courage to speak out. But they can learn from us and they can learn different things that we did or and or or are doing to better themselves because I, I I'm a firm believer in uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do something for you I'm going to provide resources and I'm gonna provide tools for you to sustain for yourself. so I think that's the only don't give a man a fish you teach a man how to fish you. so you know that's 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 the reason why I do what I do and I, and I thank you for sharing your story for that. Um, I think, and I just, on that note, let me just interject one time. I just want people to understand. Like I said, I kept stressing, I'm prideful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to put pride aside to get pride. You understand? Mm -hmm. Your situation does not make Mm -hmm. you. And sometimes to get your self-esteem back, you have to tell your story so you can claim your story. No one can tell your story better than you. Once you allow somebody else to tell your story, you lose power of how that story is yeah. told. So you got to put the pride aside and you don't have to be vocal and tell your story. Mm-hmm. But just know, do not let your situation or circumstance may, may give yourself, may give you value or whatever. whatever Make um, it define you. Say it. Lack of better yeah. Yes, because you're not your situation. Mm-hmm. And your situation will not make you who you are at the end of the day. And you know, and oh, no matter good, bad, I still praise and I gave mm-hmm. thanks to the most high because I'm alive, I'm able to feel and breathe. Exactly. You understand? Yeah. So, as long as I have life and breath in me, I kept telling myself tomorrow is going to be a better day. And sometimes that false confidence and that false hope it takes you, yeah. No, nah, no, nah, that's that's true, yeah. that's true. And that's what I always say every day, anyone asks how I'm doing, I say I'm grateful because I'm literally. I can't say sometimes I'm not happy. Some days I'm sad. Sometimes I may be mad, blessed. whatever it could be. But I'm for sure grateful because I have something. I have something I can be grateful for, no matter what it is. Whether my my eye, my eyelashes are, are working, my my eyelids are, are blinking, my hands is moving. I have something to be grateful for. So you woke up. I woke up. You know. So you I woke always up. say, you know, I'm, I'm, you have I'm grateful. Uh, no matter what aspect of life I was on, because it's a fact. I'm not lying to you. I'm telling you the truth. I'm grateful. I may not be happy or sad, but I'm grateful for sure. No doubt, no doubt about it. Yeah. The refrigerator. So, not- but um, Miss but- Jeannie, thank you so much for all the my information pleasure, you gave, and um, I didn't finish my art piece because got kind of dark, and then. I need to, I'm no, so no, no, no. sorry. We already started late anyway, but, so that's um, why I gotta stop. But I'll finish on the next. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna, I'm going to sometimes um, sometime tomorrow. Right. I don't know. Maybe we could have a little um, live just yeah. us two, cause I'm um, nothing else put on my heart. I don't know how I'm gonna navigate it yet, yeah. but um, I want to do something that's called adopt. I don't know. I just know. I yeah. know that's the name. Adapt. Um, adopt a family. Okay. And I want to connect families that are in that situation or similar situationship as I was uh-huh. in with other families, be it near or far. Okay. Bring them together and to help them get on their feet. I just don't have all the details on how I'm going to do it all to, all yeah. yet, but. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One, one, I we, want to run we, that yeah, party. we can we can link. Up. I, I I'll text you my number. I'll inbox you my number, and then we'll definitely uh we'll link up for sure. All right. So Damn. everyone, all my followers, um, thank y'all for viewing. We will respond. Any questions, any comments that you have, we'll respond to the video after. Through we'll we'll, we'll comment on it. All right. Um, thank you for watching. 
I appreciate you all. Hope you all are being grateful, positive, safe, wherever you are at. Um, and I'll catch y'all on the next episode of the Art and Talk Show tomorrow at 6.30, or tomorrow at 3.30 uh, and 6.30. So. Yeah. And I just want to say I'm a ball of resources. Yes. Like, literally. I think I am the same database as 211 and 311 <laughs> in New York. So I promise you, that I have knowledge on things that I have no business having knowledge on that I don't know what I'm going to use it yeah. for. So if you're going through something and you need advice or some type of guidance on how to go about yeah. it, please feel free to hit my please inbox. Reach out. I, I will guide you towards the right person. Cool. Awesome, yeah. I am connected to all the resources. <laughs> no, re reach out to her and or me. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm filled with definitely. resources as well, especially for Kissimmee. So reach out and uh, we'll definitely reach back out to y'all. Much love, peace, and positivity to you all. All right. Have a good one.